Uh, the main answer is that bulb goes dark, the other stays the same brightness. What's the secondary answer? Probably that bulb goes dark and the other gets brighter. So why did that bulb go dark? When we put a wire across it, suddenly, because of the wires in parallel with it, and the wire doesn't have any voltage difference, suddenly there's no voltage difference across that, uh, across that bulb. If there's no voltage difference across the bulb, then you won't find any, res any current going through it. So what happens to the other one is kind of the open question right now. So what happened to the other one? Why did it get brighter? If you have resistors that are wired in series, the total resistance of those resistors is just the sum of all of them. If they're all wired in series, so they all have to have the same current, like those two were in series, so they had to have the same current. So the total resistance before I hooked up that wire of this circuit is the resistance of those two bulbs together, added together. If one of them was R, then the total resistance is 2R. What's the total resistance in the circuit after I hook that up? Well, it's a little tricky. You could be You could say, well, this this zero resistance wire is in parallel with that with that bulb. Okay, if I have a bulb of resistance R and I put it in parallel with a wire that has resistance zero, then what's the resistance of that section? Well, it's uh, one over R plus infinity. What does that make R parallel? This whole thing on the right is infinity, which means R parallel is zero. If I hook this across here, then the sum of the, the, the total resistance of that group of stuff is zero. It's the resistance of the wire, and that's it. So the total resistance of this group of stuff went from R to zero when I shorted it. And so the total resistance of the series, well, this group of stuff is still in series with that one thing. So when I put these two together and find out that the total resistance of these two things in parallel is zero, that's a zero in, re in series with that R. So the total resistance of this went from 2R, because there were two bulbs, to 1R, because we shorted one of the bulbs out. If the resistance goes down, then the battery puts more current out. If it puts more current out, then that one bulb has more current through it, and it ends up being brighter. I got rid of one of the resistors by, by putting this wire in parallel with it, so that it ends up carrying no current. This wire here carries all the current that's going through there, but there's no voltage drop across a wire because its resistance is negligible. So, it, so this thing, instead of having to push current through two bulbs, now only has to push current through one, so it ends up pushing twice as much current, and the power depends on the current squared. The power depends on the square of the current times the resistance. So the power actually went up by a factor of four. It got a lot brighter. Any questions about, yeah? Uh, do you mind just doing that on the simulator real quick? You can do all of these with the simulators. So there they both light. If I grab a bare wire 
and put it across. OK, so right now they're both lit. If I put it across that one, one of them goes out. So now the, now this one has, has no current through it. All the current is now, all the electrons are now flowing through the wire. In fact, what, so what happens when you short it, when you short something out, is suddenly a lot of current flows through the bare wire and there's no voltage drop or negligible voltage drop across the thing that got shorted out. A lot of current running through a bare wire can be a real problem. The bare wire can heat up. And in fact, if I just stuck a bare wire into those, into those outlets, uh, I would probably be thrown across the room and get my hands burnt and whatever. A lot of bad things would happen because suddenly a lot of current was going through that wire. So you've got to be careful trying some of these things at home. The reason I could short that out is because I had, a, I had resistors in series, so there was still a resistance left in the circuit. Remember when I had resistors in parallel before and I put just a bare wire around and it shorted out those two, uh, but it also left only a, z a negligible resistance path and, and so suddenly the battery was on fire. Yeah? So I'm having trouble understanding the math for that because I thought that in parallel you use 1 over R and if R is 0 then it's 1 over R plus 1 over 0 and I don't know. So it'd be 1 over r. 1 over 0, I, I could say oh, I don't know what to do with 0, but really 0 it just means a negligibly small number. So, that, so 1 over something negligibly small is something immensely large. So this 1 over, so it doesn't even matter if I add 1 over r to it. It's still just this gigantic number. And then 1 over r parallel is 1 over something, 1 over something, it gives me a gigantic number, so that something is negligibly small. You can put real numbers in if you want to. You can call this 10 ohms and this 1 1 millionth of an ohm and calculate it out and you'll find out that this R parallel is 1 1 millionth of an ohm. Well, I'm running out of time, but I wanted to ask you one more question. We'll talk about a lot of flow problems, but I want you to think about what series and parallel mean. And I want you to think about it in a different context than electrical circuits. Remember, I mean, I, I'll go back to this. Series means the current through one circuit element is the same as the current through another. Parallel means the voltage difference across one is the voltage difference across another. This is a flow problem about diffusion. Diffusion doesn't happen because of voltage differences. It happens because of concentration differences. If I open up a bottle of, of ammonia down here, then there are a lot of ammonia molecules down here and none up there, almost none, and so these down here will diffuse up there and you'll smell it eventually but there's a concentration difference that causes diffusion. So, I open up, there, so there's three rooms. There's a room here with a closet in it. Inside that closet, I open up a bottle of ammonia. <coughs> ammonia diffuses underneath the, the door of the closet into room one. This door into room two is open. This door into room three is open. Room three has a window that's open. So, the slow diffusion from, of ammonia, from the closet, under the door, through there, through there, and out the window, reaches a steady state. I set up all this weird stuff so it would reach a steady state. It wouldn't change with time. It would reach a state where it was constant, constantly diffusing through. And my question for you, compare this diffusion problem to an electrical circuit problem. The three rooms are connected in series. The three rooms are connected in parallel. Only two of them are connected in series. Only two are in parallel or none of the above. <laughs>